Warning, this video contains answers to the mystery of binding and making mitered corners. Be prepared to be astonished. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey everybody and welcome back. My name is Sue and I'm from OML Embroidery and today I'm going to show you my few secrets that I came up with regarding binding. I know everybody hates binding, I get it. So do I, until now. Now, uh, if you're an experienced quilter and you do lots of binding, this video probably isn't for you because you already know all these things. These are things they don't tell you specifically. So I'm going to. So the first thing you need is, uh, say, a quilt block or a quilt. The very first thing you need to do is square it up. Now, what does that mean? You probably hear that all the time. What does that mean? We want everything to have nice corners like this, 90 degree corners that are perfect. How do you do that? Well, you need a ruler, first of all. This one is good for it. Um, it's hard to see the writing on it, the lines, but they're all, you know, so you can line it up and make a great corner like this. And you can do the measurements of it and how much you want left. So you can square up each block separately or just simply square it up uh, at the end when you've got them all sewn together. The other uh, piece of kit that'll work really well is the stripology ruler because you can line everything up and then just cut it. It's delightful, that one. The big, big one that I had before for cutting strips, yes, you can also use it for squaring it up. So when you are squaring it up, now we have uh, an embroidery square so we have the box going around you really can't pay too much attention to these lines a little bit but not too much because they may not be straight they you know there's pulling there's lots of different things the important thing is the outside shape we want it in a perfect square so that's what to start off with and uh, if you guys want me to show you squaring up, then leave me a message in the comments. The next thing you need is two and a half strips. Now, conveniently, jelly rolls come in that. So there's two ways of doing this. And obviously, you have to make sure that you have enough to go all the way around your quilt. You're going to end up sewing some together. And if you don't know how to do that, it's actually pretty easy. I can show you guys that as well. Now, you have, when you're starting off, you got to leave a tail here, a good amount. And you can stitch the binding on the top or on the bottom. It, try both ways and see what you think. So we're going to, you know, line it up here and then we're going to take it to the sewing machine and you're going to sew a quarter of an inch all the way down till just about the, the very corner and you're going to leave it at a quarter of an inch. So how hard is it to figure out a quarter of an inch? Well, if you have the proper foot, and this is the foot here, and I'll try to zoom right in. You can see this is the underside that it has this little bar. So when you're stitching, you have the fabric up to it, and it's stitching a perfect quarter of an inch all the way down. So how do you know where to stop? Well, you can guess it doesn't have to be perfect, but you're going to stitch and you're going to go off about a quarter of an inch. Now, I don't know if you guys have seen these rulers. It may be a little difficult for you guys to see, but it is probably the coolest ruler I've ever had. It's by Dritz and one part of it, it's kind of thick. If you guys can see, yep, yeah, it's kind of thick. That's a quarter of an inch. And I think this is three eighths of an inch. And so it's easy to figure out where quarter of an inch would be when you're when you're ending it by doing it just this way and then you can mark it. So uh, super handy thing. Now the other thing that I have is this kind of a ruler 
and it's pretty handy. I haven't really used it a whole lot and it's a special binding ruler and it really does help you figure out the correct angles for finishing when you put it together. I was able to do the lavender brown quilt like this, but this is what gave me pause. When I saw this, I thought, oh, I know what I'm doing wrong now. I know what I'm doing wrong now. So normally when I'm doing a corner, uh, sew it to the end so this part will be all sewn and then you fold it and you just line it up with the corner and then you fold it this way that's that's what they all show and that looks you know other than it's loose let me tape it down that looks pretty good right that's how it looks for everyone but then when you take it apart the struggle is it doesn't work. There's not enough room for the proper corner and I never get a mitered corner and I think I probably spend more time fighting with the corner than anything else. And this is where the magic moment happened. This is where it happened because I was like, why? What is going on? Well, two things. Angle. Angle is everything. So when you fold your fabric over, and let's see if I can do this. I gotta pull it back a little bit. You wanna get that 45 degree angle and that makes all the difference. So what I was doing before is that I was worrying about this corner and then here, and it's not quite enough. You want it a 45 degree. So, in simple terms, you can basically line up the bottom of your binding, and I'm going to double check with my ruler, this is what got me going on it, and, whoops, stick to the tape, that's not supposed to be there, and if you see, it actually is a 45 degree angle. So that, I'm telling you, is my clue, my moment my everything so they just uh, people who are experienced at it they just go this and this and they're not even thinking about hey what if I make a um, corner like how can I do it and you'll find if you do it this way which is super easy you don't have to think about it I double checked everything that I did but see, you don't want it up at an angle. You want the angle to be here. So see how I did that? Before, when I first folded it, it was like that. We want it to be straight. Now I know there's a little bit of a difference there, but the angle is 45. And then all you have to do is flip this over and start stitching it again. Okay, I actually did sew it together because it was just too fiddly to show you guys. And I usually do it from the back to the front, which makes a big difference to me. It just seems to work every time. So I have my corner and this is the back, remember? And this is the front and we're gonna flip it over and this is how we line it up. Now, one thing I found that makes a big difference is that if you iron this part down, now you guys know I'm not that big on ironing, but it does make it easier for the newbies to be able to do it. So iron it so you have a nice, you can use a little bit of starch or whatever people use. I don't use it, but it, it would help very much so go ahead and iron all the way around this is the back and uh, you can see I have a nice crease there and it just makes it that much easier to do so then let's go to the front and now we have see how much easier that is you don't have to fight with it uh, at all and we're gonna go up to the corner here I'm so excited it frayed a little bit but that's okay so you can take clips you there's quite a few things you can do i bought 
these, which are called binder clips. And they're quite handy because they have the measurements on it. So if you put them all around, you can make sure it's turned uh, at the right amount that you want. So this is how the front will look, or the back, sorry. See, and it is perfect. It is well done. So we're going to leave it like that. Let's do the same thing here. And let's get working on our corner. So the idea for the mitered corner is going to be that we want it to be a mitered corner. <laughs> so fold it like this and you can give it a quick iron if it helps. This is just my little Cricut guy that heats up pretty quickly. Uh, quick iron there. Ow, it's hot. And then we're going to fold it down. Now, look at that. First of all, look at that. Now, you want this to line up here. And so you just might have to take uh, your pokey stick and make it line up in the corner. Isn't that fantastic? What do you guys think? That, that was the easiest corner I've ever done ever. And uh, before you, you know, solidify it down, make sure that this is the right width. And I've got it a little bit too thin. So now we're going to do that again and make sure it lines up. And it's off a little bit because I moved it. But look at that. Can you guys see that? That is a square and mitered corner. And this is the front, and we'll look at the back. How did the back turn out? That is also a mitered corner. And this is really nice here, really nice. Just a, a little bit of the binding showing through on the back. I was so happy when I figured this out. It's just a couple of things um, that just make it so much better, but I am so happy with being able to do this. There's no more fighting. No more fighting. I actually set up this corner right here, right at the machine, which was cool. So uh, let me see if I can get a pin so we can really look at this. Or a clip. How about a clip? That'll do. You can also use these to put it together. So look at how great that looks. Now you might want to fold it under a little bit. So now when you're going to sew on it, you are going to sew just a little bit in for it. Just a little bit in and it's going to look fantastic. So I did it. I did it. It is a perfect mitered corner. So what are the things to remember? Square up so you have nice corners to work with. That's important. Iron your two and a half inch um, jelly roll or whatever you're going to use for the binding. Sew it on the back and flip it to the front. I just find it way easier. And then make sure it's even. 45 degrees. Um, the easiest way I'm going to show you again is when you're stitching. Let's do it here. When you're stitching down here and you want to make your fold, it's got to go even. So you've got to fold it so this part is straight. And look at that. And that is the major key to it. Like they say, people say 45 degree angle, but that doesn't make much sense to my brain. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, I thought I was doing it, and it turns out I wasn't and line everything up again. But look, just every time. So remember to make it go this way. Isn't that awesome? And it's so much easier than I thought it would. So you're going to want to iron it. You can use clips. You can use whatever to make, uh, make sure they're even. Like I said, these ones are pretty handy, but there's little gauges. You can eyeball it. You can measure it. You could take your little mini ruler thingy here that um, I wish it was colored, but it is super handy. And just even like this would be 
darn easy to do, wouldn't it? Yep, yep, right, tool for the job, and then fold your mitered corners and have absolutely, absolutely gorgeous corner squares. So if I can do it, you guys, you can do it. Those are the things I had an aha moment and it made me so happy that I finally figured it out. So I passed it on to you. My lavender brown quilt is absolutely beautiful. So happy stitching, you guys. Make these gorgeous corners. You can do it and it's absolutely perfect. Square it up, stitch down, you got this. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope you guys like this video. I hope you guys go, oh, when you do your next binding and it finally looks like this. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.